Final Fantasy IX. For a lot of people, IX is the ultimate Final Fantasy. It's heartfelt with a brilliant world and strong focus on storytelling and characters. No more advanced electric power companies or modern warfare. We return to the true fantasy setting with black mages with their pointy hats, summoners doing what they do best, four elemental shrines akin to the older games, and one big ass crystal. If you're new to this, this is my Final Fantasy replay series. I'm going through each Final Fantasy and ranking them against each other as I go. Here's the rankings so far, and by the end of this video, I'll decide where number 9 fits into these rankings. And it's going to be a strong contender with its storytelling and character writing. So, 9 begins on a theatre ship with the thief Zidane plotting to steal a princess. Vivi is a black mage wandering the streets of Alexandria. While not the main character in 9, Vivi's my favourite character. I'll talk more about him later. Steiner is an obnoxious knight blinded by his loyalty to his queen, while Garnet is a princess and white mage, and turns out she wants to be kidnapped, which propels the story into a whirlwind of political intrigue and unanswered questions. Once all these characters come together, the journey of Final Fantasy IX begins, and it's got an incredible world with lots of different races that are unique to IX. Throughout the Final Fantasy series, we often revisit the world of Evilis, like in Tactics and Final Fantasy XII, but I think Nang's world of Gaia is much more interesting, and often overlooked. There's the Kingdom of Alexandria, Lindblom with skies filled with mist-powered airships, the Black Mage Village with death literally looming over it, Burmesia, the Kingdom of Eternal Rain, and somehow Final Fantasy Nang manages to have these cute fantasy visuals, but underneath the surface is a hellscape of war, death and darkness, it's brilliant. Something new with Final Fantasy IX is the ATE system. That's active time events. Basically, you'll get little prompts every now and then, inviting you to see what's currently going on with other characters. I think this ATA system is brilliant and helps shine the light on side characters, with goofy little moments like Queena looking for food to heart-wrenching character development. It's a pity the ATA system never returned after IX. It really adds to the storytelling and character writing. And Limit Breaks make a return. We're back to a Limit Break bar and once it's full, your character will enter a trance state, taking on a new appearance and some new abilities. But what I really like about this new trance system is that it's tied to storytelling. When a character is overcome with emotion, they'll automatically enter their trance state. I think this is a cool way of letting characters visually express themselves, as well as connecting storytelling into gameplay. There's already some beautiful narrative moments that you can't help but feel empathetic for, and they're only enhanced by this little trick of emotionally triggered trances. And if you consider triggering the subscribe or like button, it's an amazing help. Trying to grow the Peter Birds channel, cover RPGs in all shapes and sizes, after this, I'll be delving a little bit further into Nang by ranking each character's story and developments with a tier list. Thank you. If you can't tell already, storytelling and characters are the reasons I love Final Fantasy Nang. Even just loading Final Fantasy Nang up, you get a little intro showcasing all the playable characters, each with their own quotes that come from the game's story. Everyone has their own personal motivations, which leads to their own developments as a character. Zidane's a pretty good main character, he's always going out of his way to help everyone, but his own world collapses around him when he has his own existential crisis, after discovering he's a biologically created alien with no parents and an angel of death sent to wipe out life on Gaia. Pretty dark, but leads to one of my favourite scenes in Nang, where everyone comes to return the favour and save Zidane. When it comes to Nang's antagonist, we've got Kuja, who's sporting a huge man thong. But I will say you get quite an awesome introduction to Kuja as he looks down on a defeated party drenched in the rain. He ends up wanting to destroy all existence. He's a little mad, but before the end, he comes to his senses and regrets his actions. 
which is something we've not seen with the previous few Final Fantasy villains. But for me, the Black Mage Vivi is my favourite character in 9. Completely innocent, often deep in thought, and a nice guy who ends up joining the journey of Final Fantasy IX in hopes of discovering why other Black Mages are waging war. Opening Pandora's box, Vivi learns his lifespan is very limited, which makes his journey even more meaningful. During the finale of the game, everyone gets their happy endings, while we read a letter from Vivi, and reading this letter, for me, is one of the most heart-wrenching moments in not just Nang, but the entire Final Fantasy series, as you realise that it seems Vivi has passed away and he thanks everyone, his memories will be a part of the sky. One of the most emotionally powerful moments in the Final Fantasy series doesn't have any fancy visuals, cinematics or epic boss battles, it's just some white text on a black background. The storytelling and writing is so powerful, this is all that's needed. I think there's an interesting parallel between the antagonist Kuja and Vivi. While Kuja finds out he's got a limited lifespan and will die soon, he acts like a bit of a spoiled brat and wants to take the universe with him. While when Vivi learns about his limited lifespan, he spends a lot of time in deep thought and continues his journey and wants to make memories. In a way, Vivi conquers death. He's an awesome character, and because of these two characters, I interpret the main theme of Final Fantasy IX to be mortality and death, or coming to terms with your own end. Okay, gonna get into the customization systems. I do prefer what the previous two games offered with materia and junction systems, but Nine's ability system is still decent. Basically, you'll learn abilities and passive effects by killing enemies while wearing different equipment. You then have a set number of ability points determined by your level, and you can spend these ability points to activate different passives, and you can freely swap between them. Maybe I'm fighting a human-based boss who does poison attacks? I want to put my human killer and anti-poison abilities on to exploit this. Like I said, I think it's decent, but one nitpick to the system is that I often hold back from using my strongest weapons or equipment, and that's because I'm still using lower level equipment till I've learned all the abilities, so I end up doing extra grinding to try and catch up. Final Fantasy VIII introduced the Triple Triad card game, and Nang follows suit with Tetra Master. I like Tetra Master, but I don't think it's quite as good as Triple Triad, while Terra Master might look simple, it's deceptively complicated. Here's a quick tutorial. So there's a few letters or numbers on each card. The first two values are used for attacks, the last two for defense. The first, third and fourth values represent a value from 0 to 9, and then A to F. The first represents the power of a card, second represents a card's class, P for physical, M for magical, X for flexible, X for flexible, or A for assault, or A for assault, or A for third value, or A for physical defense, or A magical defense. Yeah, it's a lot more complicated than you first think, but I've still had a lot of fun with this card game, even if I couldn't use the cards for character progression like I can in 8. Folding the cards for now, there's a few other small mini-games. Most notable is Chocobo Digging, where you can dig up treasures and treasure maps that eventually lead to upgrading your Chocobo's colours, allowing you to reach new areas, and the optional super boss, Ozma. He's not too hard, he's, he's kind of challenging, he's alright, and he's one of the steps to getting the Arc Summon, like a really overpowered endgame summon. Alright, time to rank Final Fantasy IX. Storytelling and character writing is very strong, backed up by that active time event system, really want to revisit the world of Nang, like how we often revisit Evilus. Vivi's up there as one of my favourite Final Fantasy characters. Love how big summons get the spotlight in the story. An antagonist that has death and sides to him, even if he does look ridiculous in that thong. Definitely better story and characters than 4. In fact, it's so good, I think Nang's story and characters outweigh its very fun junction system and guardian forces. Even with its better card game, I think 9 beats 8. Now this is the really difficult bit for me. Final Fantasy 6 or 9. They both specialise in story and characters. A lot of the characters in both games feel relatable with their own struggles. They've got somewhat similar themes. 6 is focus on hope and overcoming death and despair, compared to 9's exploration of mortality 
and coming to terms with your own existence and death. The Esper between worlds that breaks free of her enslavement. The Angel of Death between worlds that breaks out of his programming. A black mage with death looming over him. A runic knight that gives into despair but finds hope. It's an incredibly hard one to pick between the two. I think it comes down to the story loses its way a little in 9 with the planet Terra and Necron taking the big final boss slot out of nowhere. But I'll admit Nang's ending sequence is incredible. While in Final Fantasy VI, the world is destroyed and it's less linear. Storming Kefka's tower was incredible and you're on the edge of your seat waiting to see if Terra survives. I'd give them an equal score. From a technical perspective, Nang's probably better, but I'm gonna give it to six. There you have it. I wanna talk a bit more about Nang with a character stories TLS next, so watch out for that. Peace for now.